If you look around my office, you might have realized I have kind of a love for dark and twisted cartoons. And a lot of that may be because I grew up with a lot of dark and twisted cartoons. Now, I'm not talking about the ones like Batman or the ones meant for older kids. I'm talking about the ones meant for little, little kids and probably should have been made for little, little kids. And I loved the hell out of them. I loved how much they scared me. I loved how every time you got through one, you felt a little tougher. So I'm doing a series reacting and reviewing them. We're gonna analyze how creative they are, how dark they are, and if the dark twisted tone was warranted. So join me in taking a look at some dark tunes. Well, you've all wanted me to talk about this one for a while, so what better time than Christmas? Pizza on Earth was released in 1939. That's a very important year to remember, we'll talk about why in a second, let's jump right into it. As you can see, this was directed by Hugh Hartman, and he directed, uh, in my opinion, not the best cartoons, but there was definitely a little bit of an elegance and an artistry to them. The humor wasn't always that great, and uh, some of them have not aged well. <laughs> you know, there's some where he's imitating, like, black performers and stuff, and they're done very much in stereotypes. But there was always this sense of trying to get uh, some real elegant motion and movement in there. The backgrounds were usually very nice looking as well. And everybody says this is his magnum opus. A lot of people really love this one. It's on a lot of best animated shorts of all time lists. And part of the reason is it's dark as hell. I'll apologize in advance. This is the best copy I could get of this. The opening especially. Sadly, you can't make out some of the great backgrounds in it, but uh, it does get a little clearer as the imagery gets a little bit more uh, simple and cartoony. If you're lucky enough to find a really high quality version of this short, uh, it is quite beautiful. These backgrounds especially uh, are really something. I really wish there was a cleaned up high resolution version of this. I couldn't find one if you can. Please leave it in the comments because yeah, I can't find one anywhere and it really deserves to be really shown in all its clarity. You could already get an idea where this cartoon is going. You have this church that's been blown apart. You have this really peaceful snowfall and it's all quiet, but then you also see like the machine guns and the helmets there. So it's already setting up, oh, Christmas time. This is pleasant, but wha what the hell happened? <laughs> And I love this imagery of the little animals now living in the soldier's helmets. It's, on the one hand, very much a suggestion of turning something that was made for war into something peaceful, but on the other hand, it's kind of messed up. I mean, you got people who pretty much died in these helmets, and now you have animals that are living <laughs> inside them. Like I said, for a cute little 1939 cartoon with happy little squirrels, it's kind of a creepy idea. It's the spirit, sonnies. Peace on Earth. That's Mel Blanc as Grandpa Squirrel there, and a lot of people think, oh, he was only with Warner Brothers at the time, but he really kind of showed up everywhere, even in places you wouldn't expect. He wasn't always credited, like he wasn't credited in this, and he even has apparently a small voice role in the Pink Elephant scene from Dumbo. I think I brought that up when I was reviewing that, but yeah, it wasn't something where he was only Bugs Bunny and Daffy Duck. Like, he really was all over the place. My golly, it's a great old world. By Joe, there's gonna be no subtlety in this. Merry Christmas, Grandpa. Yes, Merry Christmas. So you can already tell with the lighting and the shadow work on this, on top of the great backgrounds, uh, that they put a little bit more money into this, or at the very least, a little bit more effort than the usual MGM cartoons. Which is not to say the MGM cartoons looked bad by any means, but uh, this one you could tell they wanted to be a little heavier. They wanted to be a little bit more dramatic. They wanted it to be important. And I think the style does reflect that. You can certainly see a lot of this cartoon as being very corny, certainly, uh, and and, you know, I'll, I'll make a few jokes here and there too, but I really respect the fact that they're taking something with little baby squirrels and Mel Blanc doing the voice and stuff and really trying to add this weight to it. We see this a lot of times nowadays where they'll take a cartoon that looks very silly and really add like a deeper meaning to it, like a lot of weight to it. And uh, it's nice to know even back then, like in 1939, even before then, uh, cartoons were doing this with seemingly silly looking creatures. They were trying to make them more important than just something that was just pleasant family entertainment. Goodwill to me. What are men, Grandpa? Yeah, Grandpa, what are men? 
Now, I don't know if you saw this as a kid or an adult, or maybe this is your first time seeing it, but uh, as soon as I heard that, I already knew where the cartoon was going, but there is kind of an excitement to see it go that route. You kind of know it, it's gonna be preachy, and even at the age I saw this, I must have been like 10 or something like that, I saw it on TNT. I've seen stuff like this, a lot of uh, after-school specials and Saturday morning cartoons, but the fun thing about them, even though they can really hit the hammer on the head, is that they can be allowed to go really dark and get some really kind of disturbing imagery in there. That's always the stuff I kind of look forward to as a kid whenever one of these would play. And there always was kind of an excitement too to see, will it work? Will this actually have a message that holds up? Because as a kid, I definitely knew, yeah, some of these are either going to work or they're not. And uh, this one, this one I think works well enough. There ain't no men in the world no more, Sonny. They wore great big iron pots on their heads. Now look at this style change. You literally just went from Grandpa Squirrel talking to two cute little squirrels to just this creepy looking monster, which we all recognize as a soldier, you know, in wartime. Uh, and this was very much referencing World War I. And I love the way it did kind of transition there, because it doesn't just go from the squirrel talking to uh, this soldier here. You have that shadow work that's going to slowly get you into a little bit more of this visual language, because anytime it obviously cuts to World War I, it's going to be darker, it's going to be gray. And I think the way they did that was very clever without necessarily having to be too jarring in the style. And their eyes flashed. And they had tremendous big snoots. And I think this transition back to the cute squirrel shows very much, you know, how the soldier's uniform can look very normal to us, but how it can look very scary to these very cute, cuddly animals. Why, there was always a fight. The vegetarians began to fight the meat-eating people. So this is always fun to try to figure out, because you have a question of, are the animals just seeing World War I and remembering it differently? Are they just kind of interpreting everything in, in a different way? Way, or did this actually happen? Did they just go from World War One to another war and they kept finding new reasons to fight each other? And did it actually build to something that made a little bit more sense than the vegetarians versus the meat eaters? Or was it something that, you know, this is just how Grandpa Squirrel is remembering it? They all got into a terrible swamp. Man, look at those backgrounds. Again, I know this isn't the best copy, but I mean, you can make out the shadow work there and the red sky. It almost has a Bakshi feel to it. And I wouldn't be shocked if there was some... I don't want to necessarily say rotoscope, but at the very least, they looked at soldiers, you know, carrying the guns and, and dressed up and everything. And maybe from f some footage, or maybe even got some people dressed up just to run across and stuff like that, because the uh, movement is very lifelike. <laughs> Again, a lot of this looks like footage that was seen in uh, film strips at the time, you know, newsreels and stuff. So I really, I really admire the fact that they're trying to really go outside their comfort zone here. Again, I mean, we're mostly looking at MGM cartoons, Tom and Jerry and cuddly animals getting into trouble and stuff. I mean, this is much different territory than they usually tackle. So I really give them credit that they very clearly looked at some of this footage that was taken from World War I and really went the extra mile with it. Uh, see, it went from red to green. This is a Christmas special. Until there was only two of them left. And I like this idea that the whole war just comes down to two people left. <laughs> Still on either side with the guns. They're, they're not going to go home. They're not going to try and, you know, restart humanity or anything. No, they're just still going to kill each other because men suck. But again, I really like the idea. Is this the end of humanity or is this just a part of the world where just man never came back. You know, they bombed this area. We don't know exactly at what point in time this is. We just know it's after World War I. So I like the idea that it's a little bit more open. You don't know if mankind just destroyed itself or if this is just the animal's recollection of what happened because they just never saw man after that. 
some really great animation here. Again, really working outside their comfort zone. Uh, and again, you could say it's a little melodramatic with the guy going down, literally just putting his hand up so he can get the really dramatic image of the hand going down. I always wanted to see like a little middle finger come up whenever he does that. But the idea of really holding on him going down into the water and the hand and the shadow work. As a kid, that really stuck out to me. Like, this did really stay with me, and I didn't remember the name of this cartoon or anything, but I do very much remember thinking to myself, man, th th this is gonna stay with me for a bit, and it has all these years later. The last man on Earth. And look at that, just complete silence after that. You just have this dark, empty field and some clouds going by and just no music or anything, just complete silence. I mean, they want this to really sink in, and I think for the most part, they're achieving it. This is really doing stuff you just didn't see as much, definitely from MGM, an MGM animated short. And man, again, I know not the best copy, but just beautiful blending of different gray palettes there and just little splashes of yellow and, and, and blue and brown. I mean, it's supposed to look ugly and destroyed, but there's also like kind of a silent beauty to it as well with the different shadows in there and the blending of brush strokes. In a strange way, it is kind of beautiful. And I love the way the color palette again kind of goes from these really dark, muddy grays to this more very light, heavenly blue within the church here with the sun shining through, you know, right on the good book here, <laughs> what's left of this church. And again, it doesn't feel like it goes from really dark gray to just bright blue all of a sudden. There is a transition in there that uh, works very organically. Looks like a mighty good book of rules, but I guess them men didn't pay much attention to it. This particular Bible took a very long time to get through. Every five words had its own page. I believe they released it in 90 separate books. It, it killed the printing companies, but you know, man's not around anymore anyway, so it doesn't matter. Ye shall rebuild the old wastes. And again, even though it is cheesy and corny, I like the simplified way of sometimes looking at things. I love the book of rules for humans. That, that's just a fun way of looking at that, really simplifying a lot of complicated things going on in the world and the history of mankind and stuff like that. I do like things like this, even though, yes, there's Many arguments you can make about the complications of being a human animal and stuff, but that's why I think we have cartoons like this. They can kind of simplify things down and make it work. Make it work in a world where this stuff can happen, where animals can take over after mankind. <laughs> Timmy, we're gonna make an observatory in soldier number 55, Skull! Oh, they have a bank, so there's money in this world. They ain't gonna have peace for long. Nice transition from springtime to wintertime with the snow being on the helmets and everything. And again, there is a lot of creativity to how they make a village out of what's left from the war here. And that's why we say, peace on earth, good will. But okay, remember how he said, remember the year 1939? Well, October 1939 is when Hitler invaded Poland, and there was a lot of talk of should America get involved in this war and what's going on. So there's a lot of talk about how this might have been a plea for America not to enter World War II, which of course we eventually did in the 40s. Could they have known at the time and made this to sort of make a plea to not go into war? Uh, did we see what happened with World War I and all the death and destruction and say, hey, we should stay out of this, you know, don't let it happen? I personally think it's good we went into World War II for all the suffering and terrible things that happened, but we're stopping this monster from trying to take over the world. Whether or not this was intentional or not, to say uh, whether we should enter World War II or, or not, uh, I think there's a very noble message in there that, yes, you could argue is more complicated than this cartoon is making it out. I respect a cartoon that has this message because, in my opinion, it's something to strive for, even though we may never get it. If we got only one-tenth of peace on Earth, it'd probably be better than the alternative, you know what I mean? So I still really respect a cartoon with this message, no matter when it came out. And there you go. In case you missed the message, peace on Earth. Uh, there's several 
interesting uh, follow-ups to this. Uh, one is that apparently, and I really do use the keyword apparently, this was nominated for a Nobel Peace Prize. A, a lot of animated historians uh, say this, even the director said it was nominated. Peace on Earth is the only one nominated for a Nobel Peace Prize. But we can't find any records of it. Uh, from what I've looked up, maybe that's changed, I don't know. Uh, it's interesting either way. I mean, somehow that got put out there. On top of that, there is a reboot of this, I'm not even kidding, also from MGM, made in 1955 by Hanna-Barbera, and it's a similar idea, I mean, it's essentially the exact same idea, it's mice instead of squirrels singing this time, it's called Goodwill to Men, you know, a follow-up to Peace on Earth here, obviously, and it's updated to include World War II imagery, including the atom bomb, instead of just two men shooting at each other, an atom bomb, actually several atom bombs, <laughs> just blow up the Earth, so you could argue it's a little bit more timely, but it's almost beat for beat, even sometimes line for line, the exact same thing. I like the animation this a little bit more. By doing the exact same thing, just changing it to World War II and the atom bomb, uh, I think it doesn't have that fresh feel to it. But you could argue that's the idea, that even years later, this message still has relevance. Uh, but I don't know, I feel like it has more relevance when this came out in 1939. Even though, again, I think you could argue going to World War II was a good thing, but I still feel like the overall message really does stand. The animation on it is very, very nice. And in some respects, I was the perfect age to watch it. Like I said, this was on uh, TNT, it just happened to be on, and it stuck with me. I, I didn't necessarily remember the title of it, but I remember, man, this cartoon where these squirrels are talking, mankind didn't make it, it was Christmas, and it, they killed each other over war. That imagery stuck with me, and I think it's gonna stay with a lot of people who see it. it again, could very easily say it's too simplified, but I think that's the point. I think it's supposed to be more general and more broad and get across this feeling, this idea that doesn't have a lot of details to it, but it's just supposed to kind of stick with you. The imagery of mankind taking each other out and the animals roaming the earth. And I guess it stuck with a lot of other people because they're still talking about this cartoon. It is a shame. I don't think there's a high-res version out there. Again, at least not one that I could find. So uh, I'd really love to see this get a real cleaned up version out there because again the artwork even for the little digital version that we're seeing that doesn't look very high res still does stand out and I think the idea is very noble and I think the cartoon does work but uh, what did you think because I'd love to know do you think the essential message of peace on earth something so simple really does work or do you think nah, that that's too corny you do need some details in there to how to really make this happen if not you're just sounding very pompous um I feel it works on the same level as something like Snow White or Wizard of Oz does. It's not meant to have any real bearing on too much logic. It's supposed to get across an emotion that can lead to an idea that then can maybe lead to details. That's my thought. I'd love to know your thoughts. Hey everyone, if there's any particular cartoon you want me to look at as being very dark or twisted, leave it in the comments below. Again, I'm not really looking for movie scenes or cartoons meant for teenagers or older. I'm talking about ones meant for little kids, but still scare the shit out of you. Whether it's an old cartoon or a new cartoon, let me know what you want me to look at.